Hey, hello Bax Music. My name is Martin and I'm very happy you're watching another video on the Bax Music UK YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be having a comprehensive look at the Divine EM series of in-ear monitors. I'm going to talk about the specifications and why they might be a crucial upgrade for you as a live artist on stage. So let's go check them out. So in today's video, we'll be looking at the EM series by Divine. We got the EM 200s, we got the EM 500s, and we got the EM 1000s. And the differences between these, besides the design, is mainly the amount of drivers that you get inside of each one of these in-ear monitors. Drivers could be seen as speakers, in quotation marks, uh, that are built inside of the earpiece. With the 200s, you get one driver, with the 500s, you get two, and with the 1000s, you get three drivers. What this allows is for each driver to work less hard because it's only responsible for a certain range of frequencies if you're using multiple drivers. All of these are responsible for the entire range of human hearing, so from 20 hertz in the low end to 20 kilohertz in the high end. And if you've been on stage like me a couple of times before, that's probably not 20 kilohertz anymore, but it can go all the way up until the 20k. Having one driver means that there is one speaker that is responsible for that entire range. With the 500s, you have one for the low mids and one for the mid highs, so each of these drivers has to work less hard to produce an accurate picture of what you want to listen to. And for the 1000s, you get one for the lows, one for the mids, and one for the high frequencies to produce the sound that you're looking for, and giving you a more clear image. What I want to do now is quickly unpack one of these in-ear monitors. What's in the box is identical for all of these, so I'm gonna just unpack one and except for the earpieces themselves, the contents should be absolutely the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna grab these nice gold EM1000s and let's just open it up, shall we? Inside of the box we find a little container containing everything that we're going to need. At the top we'll find two holes which perfectly house the in-ear monitors themselves and they're kind of tiny so I will use close-up images to give you a good look at these but they are small and they're built to fit snugly and smoothly inside of the ear canal. Below this we find a small little carrying case which I'm going to grab now and open up to tell you what's inside. Once we open it up, and this is also the way to transport your in-ear monitors, we find a bunch of extra tips. And the tips are what you put on top of the in-ear monitors. That is the part that actually will go inside of your ear. And you'll get these in both silicone and in foam. And depending on the shape of your ear, the size of your ear, uh, you need to find the right one to suit your needs. And finding that will give you a more accurate picture of what you're listening to, also close off more of the ambient noise that is around you, especially if you're on stage, that's important. And finding the right one is a major benefit to having in-ear monitors. And once you do, a pack of 20 of these tips are cheaply and easily purchased, of course, through Bax Music, so you can keep everything nice and clean every once in a while, which of course is important for hygienic reasons. Next to that we find a little cleaning cloth so you can brush everything off when needed. And below that we'll find the cable that will connect your inner monitors to your belt pack. And these come standard with an inline microphone, which I'll get to in just a second, because a lot of people are looking for in-ear monitors for jogging purposes. Like when they go outside, the curled cable that is at the end of this cable, which I'll quickly grab, is reinforced with a little bit of plastic, so it allows for, for the cable to curl behind your ear and snugly fit inside of your ear, reducing movement, reducing friction, which of course is very useful if you're jumping around on a stage, but people also look for these when they go out jogging and need something that'll stay inside their ear, and for the price point, a lot of people won't leave these hanging. On the other end, we find a TRRS cable, so one that also supports the inline microphone, so you can actually use the microphone to talk on voice call. And at the bottom here, it's kind of attached with a bit of tape. I want to repackage these, so I'm not going to get it out, but it's a little cleaning tool so you can clean your in-ear monitors. So that's what's inside of a set. Next to that you get a couple of accessories that come with the Divine series of in-ear monitors. And of course, right out of the box you have everything that you need to get started. You get different tips, you get the cable, you get the in-ear monitors themselves. But let's say you snag your cable. Well, it's very easy to replace the in-ear monitor cable. 
Uh, you get the black one with the inline microphone as standard, but you can get different colors and also without the inline microphone as uh, accessories that you can get separately from Bax Music. And the benefit of this is that if you snag a cable and you happen to break it or you lose it or whatever happens to it, these are really easy and cheap to replace. And you connect them like so. You got an MMCX connector and for those unfamiliar, it's this teeny tiny gold plug and the inner monitor itself has a teeny tiny gold connector. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come straight on and push it in until it gives a slight click. Uh, not audible, but you can feel the click and that connects the in-ear monitor to the cable and it's secure. If the cable gets damaged and stops working, it's very easy to replace or if you just wanna put away the inner monitor back into its case. It's really simple. You just grab with two fingers and pull straight back and it'll disconnect. And this allows you to change the cable if it ever needs replacing or if you want to store everything nicely in the little carrying bag. And also, if you happen to lose this one, you can get that as a separate thing. And as stated before, if you find the right tip for you, it's nice for hygienic reasons mostly to get multiple of these and a bag of 20 is dirt cheap and allows for, yeah, more hygiene in your stage performances. So everything is made to be modular, everything is made to be easily maintained and replaced in case something breaks, and everything comes at a very competitive, low budget price point. So if you've never worked with in-ear monitors before, this is the time and the product to give it a try. The EM200s are the perfect starting point for starting out with in-ear monitoring, featuring a very, very low price point and allowing you to experience what it's like to use in-ear monitors live on stage because there is a main benefit of using in-ear monitors over conventional floor monitors where you have wedges on the floor that is playing sound to you. The main benefit of having in-ear monitors is that you can add stuff to it and that you can isolate the things that you want to hear at any given time. Let's say you're a bass player and you just want to hear the drums and just a little bit of the guitars and vocals. Well, you can easily request that from your sound engineer and ask for just the drums mainly with a little bit of guitar and vocals so you have reference to where you are in the song. Having an isolated mix like that that is tailor-made for you allows you to hear the parts that you want to hear. Having a floor monitor on the floor can offer you those things, but you'll still hear the drum kit, you'll still hear the guitar amplifier, you'll hear the audience in front of you yelling at you, all at the same time, allowing for a less accurate picture of what you want to listen to. And again, if you find the right tips that, again, come along with the EM series of in-ear monitors, get the one that is right for you and it'll isolate even more so you can hear exactly what you want to hear, bringing the volumes of the in-ear monitors down as well, allowing you to protect your hearing at the same time. Next to that, you have the added benefit of having a metronome and cues that you can add to what you're hearing on stage. The metronome is of course the big one because you cannot play a metronome nor cues over a floor monitor because that is something that is played at a very loud volume so the audience will hear the metronome and nobody wants to hear tick, 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 tick in the background of their performance. So having that allows the band to be on the same pulse, have the same cues, everything is lined up and ready to go taking a lot of the guesswork, taking a lot of the memorization out of performance. Of course, you gotta practice, of course you gotta learn the songs, but if you get lost in the music at some point, having cues, having a metronome set up and ready allows you to reconnect to the BPM as fast as possible, allowing for a better performance, allowing you to focus more on your performance overall. So before I round off this video, I wanna add a little bit of a caveat to the in-ear monitors, especially if you want to get these for personal use, which I truly get for one, for the price point, and two, because in-ear monitors usually sport a curled cable like this that is reinforced at a loop behind your ear, allowing for little to no movement in your in-ear monitors, which is of course great if you're jumping around on stage, but if you're a hiker, if you're a runner, I do understand why you want something like this, because they'll stay inside of your ears while you're listening. These feature very low impedances. And impedance is the resistance to the signal that you're trying to push through. And these are of course made to be used in a very, very loud environment. So they're also made to go very, very loud themselves. If you're using these for personal use and you're not fully sure of how loud they can go, 
please do turn your volume down on your device before plugging them in. Start playing your music and then slowly bring up the volume to a comfortable level. Please protect your hearing. And this is something that I'll say in every in-ear monitor review because these are great sounding. They give a nice flat response, no extra this or that, just nice, flat, true to life representation of what you want to listen to. And because of the low movement of the earpieces themselves, I understand why you might want one of these. So please do turn them down before plugging them in and starting to play music. The EM200s feature 32 ohms of impedance, and this is pretty standard for headphones that you get with a smartphone, for instance. It is the 1000s and the 500s where the impedance goes really low. The 1000 features 24 ohms of resistance and the 500s feature only 12 ohms. So if you're getting the 500s, be especially careful in turning up the volumes because you could damage your hearing, again, because they are made to function inside of a very loud environment. So that's the little caveat that I want to add to the end of this video. If you're considering one of these for running, hiking, or other activities that involve a lot of movement and you want these to stay snugly inside of your ear canal. So that wraps up the EM series of in-ear monitors by Divine. I hope this video gave you a good look into what the benefits are of in-ear monitoring and some of the specs of these in-ear monitors themselves. If this video was useful to you, please leave a like. And if you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below. I'm not the greatest expert in making mixes for in-ear monitoring, but I know a couple of colleagues who do. So if you have questions about in-ear monitoring, do ask them down below and I'll see if I can connect you to the right people. That sums it up for me today. My name is Martin. If you like this video, please do subscribe to the Bax Music UK YouTube channel and I'd love to see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.